How's it going you guys and welcome to your morning cup. Now let's talk about the Suez Canal incident. Now what actually happened in the canal? Now to put things in perspective, let's first talk about what actually transpired and what vessel was actually involved. So the Ever Given, a 220 ton, 400 meter long vessel owned by a Japanese firm Shoikisen KK, got wedged between the two narrow banks of the Suez Canal, which is a single lane stretch of canal about six kilometers north of the southern entrance of the canal itself. That's where the ship essentially ran ashore, if you will. Now, by no means of the imagination was the ship under some kind of strain from mechanical errors or was the crew at fault. but it was the winds and the sandstorm that was in the region that gave very poor visibility and the winds essentially deviated the ship from its original course and took it further inland and towards one side that essentially made it wedge now what we also understand is the fact that the ship is not damaged and if the ship was damaged it would have been a bigger catastrophe considering that the sheer amount of load that is on the ship it would have had to been taken off the ship and then it's in the middle of essentially nowhere the suez canal by no means is a dock by no means has any ability to take away all of those containers from above the ship and then fix the ship and tow it away from there but if nothing else is probable that is what they have to possibly do so they're going to have to bring in a ton of equipment to make sure that each and every container is pulled out safely and securely and then it's all accounted for and all of that but what we do understand is for now there have been numerous attempts that have been made to make sure that this ship the ever given if you will is pulled away from the canal shores what we understand is that the first attempt was 10 tugboats that were brought in deployed and in an early attempt to dislodge the ship and well it failed tremendously the ship is just too heavy and it's wedged in too far deep into the sand underneath the basic banks and it's just not possible for a ship that size and that weight to be just pulled out by tugboats so what happens next well they're thinking of bringing in a bunch of boats that are going to pull out the sand from underneath the banks where the ship is essentially lodged let those sand banks completely get dissolved in by pumping in a ton of water while sucking out the sand and then thereby making sure that the ship can then try to be pulled out by more tugboats that are way more powerful what we also understand is the fact that the ship is manned by a 25 crew of only indian sailors so essentially in the beginning when the cause of action as to why the ship ran ashore was not known there was shots being fired left right and center people were pointing fingers at indian sailors stating that they aren't capable of sailing the international waters and such which is just ridiculous to begin with see accidents happen there's no way anyone could have gained control over what happened and what transpired according to the actual reports of things as i just mentioned there was a sandstorm in the region there were winds upwards of 40 knots the ship couldn't have been in control at that point in time especially in such a narrow gap it's just hard to control a ship that size and considering that the sheer scale of this vessel when a 40 knot wind is hitting the side of this vessel of course it's going to start pushing the vessel towards one side there's nothing that could have been done also egyptian authorities have banned any and all media presence to have boots on the ground reporting in the region that's why you don't really see a bunch of reporters standing around the shoreline of the ever given and reporting with the ever given behind them. the egyptian authorities have made a strict strict guideline that no reporters are going to be boots on the ground thereby a lot of the visuals that you're seeing about the ever given being marked run ashore is obviously from top down shots usually with helicopter photography or satellite imagery and everyone's just speculating from their own given studio spaces if you will the white house dictated that they might have access to equipment that a lot of other countries might not have access to and they are already in talks with the egyptian authorities trying to figure out what they can do to bring balance to the situation what they can do to help out and essentially save the world's economy if you will you see every hour that the ever given is lodged into the suez canal side and blocking one of the most essential trade routes in the world upwards of 400 million dollars per hour is being lost to the global economy that is a blow that is just too hard to sustain in the middle of a pandemic wherein most economies are just starting to pick back up 
and a blow like this of 400 million dollars per hour and it's already been upwards of 48 so you do the math it's just ridiculous to understand how much money is being lost by such a logistical nightmare what we also understand is the fact that there has been tremendous delay to the vessels that are behind it you see 200 vessels are already waiting in line behind the ever given to make sure that they can go across but they've been stranded and a hundred more vessels were in route to the Swiss Canal while this incident happened whether they're going to be rerouted to go across Africa is still anyone's guess most of the ships are already being rerouted especially ever given sister ship as well she has already been rerouted to go a different direction to make sure that no more time delays are occurring but the sheer reason why the Swiss Canal was made in the first place was to substantially lessen the amount of time it takes to do these long sea voyages with a ton of cargo and if you had to go around it's going to take so much longer than you can comprehend considering that it might take upwards of 15 to 45 days longer for the goods to actually reach their destination you see this ship was going from china to rotterdam and it's sailing under the flag of panama it's just I don't understand why a Japanese firm is sailing a ship under the flag of Panama except for the sheer reason why there are lesser laws in place in Panama when it comes to sailing the open oceans if you will. You see big companies often do this, they register their ships under nations that have well rather lenient laws. If anything happens they are not held completely liable for whatever happened in the first place. And that, that's another scapegoat, if you will. That's another way that these people figure out to make sure that they can get away from their responsibilities. And it's quite disappointing to begin with. But in a situation like this, fingers are being pointed at the owners of the vessel, the crew of the vessel, the vessel itself. But the point of the matter is that this was a freak of nature incident. This was by no means a, in, an incident that, according to the current information that is available to us, that could have been monitored or could have been avoided due to manual involvement. It is just something that happened and something that could not have been controlled otherwise. What we understand by the end of it is that such freak of nature events that happen that compromise the world's economy always bring us back to the same equation. That when nature comes into play, there's nothing you can do, no matter how big your vessels are, no matter how prominent you believe you are in the world, no matter how much money you have in your bank accounts or no matter how much power you have in the world. If nature is against you, you ain't got much of a fighting chance. This has been your morning cup. We'll let you know if the ship gets dislodged anytime soon. See you tomorrow.